Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for joining us. We begin the show this week with election results. With 65.3% of voters casting their ballots in his favor, Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett secured a third term in office. Lorna Virgili sat down with the executive to talk about his victory and plans for the next four years. Lorna? Sonia, the county executive, says he is grateful to Montgomery County voters and that he is ready for his third term, where he will focus on financial sustainability and job creation. Well, first of all, let me thank and acknowledge the voters of Montgomery County for placing their trust and confidence in me and looking at the job that we performed over the last eight years, especially under some very, very difficult circumstances and conditions. We inherited a very difficult recession that was really international, and we had to do an awful lot of difficult things in a relatively short period of time. His top priority for the next four years is to maintain balanced budgets. So we want to ensure that as we go to the future, our budgets, our financials are sustainable. That's one. Secondly, uh, job growth, the opportunity to enhance uh, our economic clout, I think is something that uh, we need to stress and to get on a different uh, set of uh, challenges that relates to how we can overcome. State funding for school construction is still at the forefront of the agenda, as well as transportation funds in the groundbreaking for the Purple Line. I'm hopeful that it will happen. I'm hopeful that the new administration will recognize that Montgomery County is the economic engine of the state of Maryland, that we need those transportation dollars, that it not only just does not just only help Montgomery County, but it really helps the entire state. We have 100,000 jobs that are really in the pipeline that we need to make sure happen. And that happens, hurt, helps everyone around the state. It does not hurt anyone else. It helps everybody around the state. And so we want to make sure that the new governor, Governor Hogan, understands that. And I'm hopeful that once he looks at the facts, he understands the seriousness of it and how it relates to the rest of the state of Maryland, uh, that he will be supportive of the major initiatives we have in Montgomery County. With a change of guard in Annapolis, Montgomery County's top leader pledges to continue pushing for additional state funding. Uh, with the new governor, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm prepared to, to work with him, and I think we both have the interest, not only in Montgomery County, but the state uh, to move it forward. And uh, he's the like, governor-elect, and we'll sit down and uh, work accordingly. In Rockville, for County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgili. No real surprises in the race for county council, where all nine seats will be filled by Democrats. But as Susan Kennedy reports, there will be two new faces on the council, which could change the way business is done. All seven county council incumbents won re-election handily in an election where voters across the nation and state cast their ballots for change. In the at-large race, Councilmember Mark Elrich was the lead vote-getter for the third straight election cycle. I do a lot of community work. I mean, I'm not shy about that. I do, um, I guess a lot of community groups look at me as a council member they can go to to talk about issues that affect them. I'm very sympathetic in terms of how you look at future growth and its impact on existing communities and the people who live here now. I guess I'm notorious for not being willing to sacrifice current residents for who might live here in 2040. Two new members will represent districts three and five. Former Gaithersburg Mayor Sidney Katz will take over for council veteran Phil Andrews, and Tom Hucker will give up his job as state delegate for the seat that has been held by Cherie Branson, who stepped in for Valerie Irvin when she left the council earlier this year. Certainly a little bit of an emotion for me. I mean, I certainly have, have loved being the mayor of Gaithersburg, and, and uh, they say, you know, once a mayor, always a mayor, and I'll certainly keep, keep that in mind. But, but I'm, I'm looking forward to this next chapter. I tell people I'm just moving my government office down the road a piece, and I also tell people that, that I'm still going to be representing them for, from Gaithersburg, but in, in a much more enhanced way for the rest of District 3, for the rest of Montgomery County. And, you know, I always think of the community being my family, and so my family's just gotten much larger and I'm very proud of that. Both Sydney and Tom are well known in local politics and although there'll be new faces on the county council, uh, they both have many years of experience and a lot of political knowledge and smarts. The new council will take the oath of office on December 1st, followed by its first regular session on December 2nd. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. 
Moving on to some of the state races. One of the biggest upsets of the night was Republican Larry Hogan's victory over Democrat Anthony Brown in the statewide race for governor. Montgomery County resident Brian Frosch won his bid for attorney general, and Montgomery County resident Peter Franchot retained his seat as the state's comptroller. In the race for state's attorney, Democrat John McCarthy won. Barbara Meeklejohn was unopposed in the race for clerk of the circuit court, and Sheriff Darren Popkin and Register of Wills Joseph Griffin also won without opposition. In the county school board races, Jill Ortman Faust, Judy Daca, Patricia O'Neill, and Mike Durso came out on top. As for voter turnout, 38.9% of registered voters cast ballots in the general election. All results remain unofficial until certified by the Board of Elections on November 14th. You can find complete election results on the Board of Elections website. The Gaithersburg City Council has selected Neil Harris, a resident of the Ketlands community, as its newest member. Harris will fill Judd Ashman's vacancy on the council, which expires in November of 2015. You may remember Ashman was chosen to become the city's next mayor after Mayor Sidney Katz submitted his resignation. A swearing-in ceremony for both Harris and Ashman is scheduled for November 10th at Gaithersburg City Hall. In Rockville, city staff and residents had a chance to see what the proposed Rockville Pike plan might actually look like as they toured Rockville Pike during a recent walking meeting. Rockville 11 reports. Rockville's mayor and council toured Rockville Pike on a walking meeting about the Rockville Pike plan draft alongside planning staff, property owners, and Rockville residents. Um, the mayor and council are working with the planning staff to tour Rockville Pike. There are citizens here, there are developers here. So we are looking at the proposed Pike plan. We're actually walking it, which is very good because it gives us a better sense of what's coming to Rockville and where it's going to be and how it's going to affect the citizens of Rockville. Those who went on the tour were able to travel up and down Rockville Pike to see what the proposed Pike plan would actually look like. We um, boarded two buses and we went down, um, took a look at the Fleet Street extension that's proposed in the draft plan, where that's located. We got out on the pike, um, looked at some existing conditions of where sidewalks are, where existing access roads are, um, where the buildings are located, heights of buildings, that kind of thing, pointed those out. Um, and then we got off um, near the Twinbrook Metro Station and did a, a short walking tour. Um, pointing out where the plan, uh, the draft plan would put the access roads, where the buildings would be, just so people could get an idea of what's existing versus what um, is planned in the draft. Mayor Bridget Newton says that this walking meeting was an important step in the planning process. Well, I think, um, number one, it's a good thing to walk any property that you're talking about redeveloping because then you get the real feel for it. But I think it was very important on the pike because there are so many different property owners and it's um, good for each of us to hear from them, to see what we're talking about and see what they're talking about as, as compared to what the plan actually says. And there may be some tweaks that need to be made. All in all, it's a great plan, but, but there may be some fine tuning that we have to do and listening to them and hearing from them as they stand in front of each of their properties is is a great way to um, to really understand. If you missed the walking meeting for the draft Rockville Pike plan, it's not too late to get involved. More public hearings will be held November 17th and December 8th in the mayor and council chambers. For more information on the draft Rockville Pike plan, visit rockvillemd.gov slash Rockville's Pike. For County Report this week, I'm Morgan Lash. Coming up next on County Report this week, when learning English extends beyond the classroom. And we'll tell you why they're digging a hole for the county's old zoning ordinance. Stay with us. County Report this week is coming right back. Hey, mister. Down here. You illegally passed the stop school bus. I'm placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. 
Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Officials toted their shovels to Park and Planning Headquarters recently to dig a grave for the county's old zoning ordinance. And as Susan Kennedy reports, the symbolic burial marks the beginning of a new era in planning. Montgomery County officials said rest in peace to old zoning regulations in a New Orleans style funeral that took place in Silver Spring. We are gathered together <laughs> to celebrate the end of the past. The old code had been in place since 1977, and earlier this year, a new code was adopted to replace this 1,200-page document. We are really changing uh, the way that we communicate in a way that's really responsive to the community, that accommodates so many concerns and makes it clear for once what the rules are and how important uh, community engagement and, and thoughtful presentations uh, really are. The new zoning code is available to residents in an online interactive format. The code promotes smart growth principles with more density allowed in and around transit and encourages more mixed use developments. Planning Board Chair Casey Anderson says developing the new code was a big undertaking, but the result will be more sustainable development and better design. I think it'll make it easier for ordinary people to understand what the rules are, what they can do with their property, what their neighbors can do with their property. So that'll make it uh, a lot more straightforward if people want to get involved in our processes to understand what the parameters are. The burial ceremony had particular meaning to those who worked for more than four years on the revision. So many people involved with so many hours of tedium that they went through. Officials say they are relieved to have the job behind them and won't miss having to work with the bloated, overly complex document. Some a little more than others. <laughs> we really haven't changed a lot of substance, but what we have done is created an accessible and consistent and modern document to guide our future. So it's very exciting. In Silver Spring, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. When student athletes take the field, their goal is to win. But for some who are learning English as a second language, playing sports is helping them advance their language skills as well. Alini Barrows joins us with this story. That's right, Sonia. I'm visiting Montgomery County High Schools where learning English is extended outside classrooms and also in the playing field. Despite cultural differences when it comes to sports, these students speak the same language. And whether it's soccer, lacrosse, football, or any other sport, coaches and teachers agree extracurricular activities help non-native English speakers build confidence to speak English proficiently. And it's so awesome to see these um, kids who've only been here for one or two years playing football, playing soccer, playing baseball. So those things are getting them out into the community. It's getting them you know, involved in our culture. Wheaton High School physical education teacher Oscar Amawanya coaches the soccer and lacrosse teams. He's also a bilingual teacher. He says being able to coach in English and Spanish helps students feel comfortable on the playing field. I give all my instruction in, uh, in English all the time. And then I look at the students and if I see that they're not understanding something or they're not doing what they're supposed to or they look puzzled, you know, I look at their body language and see that they then I'll walk up to them and see, you know, are you understanding what, what needs to be done? Eric is originally from El Salvador. He moved to the U.S. one year ago and says even though the communication is sometimes difficult, his teammates at Quince Orchard High School are always there for him. I love the team, the coach, the training, everything, the, everything is focused. The opportunity the coach gave me to me, sometimes it's difficult for the communication. When I don't understand the coach say, they help me. Man. I feel like that brings us more together. Like, we try to communicate more in the field. I had a new kid, Esau kid, who just came in. He came in the middle of the season, a lot of things he was behind on. But, you know, the, the great thing about it was other students stepped in, other players stepped in and said, look, this is where you need to be. And they sort of buddied up. And educators agree that immersion is the key to learn a new language. For County Report This Week, I'm Alini Barrows. 
Now it's time to check in with Tom Pope from the county's Department of Transportation, who has our latest transportation update. Tom? Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update from Montgomery County. Our highway services crews have begun their annual leaf vacuuming collection. From early November through December within leaf districts, crews will make two passes on each street several weeks apart. Signs announcing the collection will be posted, green signs announcing the first collection, and red signs stating the final collection date. Leaves should be placed in piles on the grass or behind the curb. Putting leaves in the street can disrupt traffic, interfere with water drainage, or pose a fire hazard. Sticks, branches, and garden debris should be placed in containers or tied in bundles and put out at the curb for recycling. To make sure MCDOT is prepared for winter weather, Highway Services held its annual snow summit. Kicked off by the county executive, the summit brought together county crews and contractors to review snow removal strategies. Highway will hold a practice drill for county crews to test equipment and procedures and familiarize new drivers with the snow routes. The public is reminded of our website map that provides information on any storm, including road closures and access to traffic cameras. When a storm hits, go to MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. We're working to keep you moving. And at the annual snow summit, one of the new initiatives discussed was the road weather information system that the Division of Highway Services installed last winter season. The system consists of four pavement monitoring stations that were strategically placed in areas of the county that experience microclimates. There is no other measure that compares to how our residents and businesses see snow. It is something for which people measure and either get very excited initially about or get very angry when they do not see the kind of progress that they want. We want to inform the public. We want to manage their expectations. We want to provide them with as much reliable information as we can. We want to inform our elected officials, the county executive, our friends at the county council. You know, we're all in this together. We want this program to be transparent, reliable. We want to provide real-time information. New to the program this year, we're going to be providing information on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and as in the past, we'll continue to, to be on cable channel uh, 6, in addition to the news medias that often follow uh, winter storm events. Coming up on County Report this week, we'll visit an art exhibit at Montgomery College. And we'll visit the campus of John Hopkins University's Montgomery County campus for some hands-on science lessons. Stay with us. County Report this week is coming right back. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> Now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, deli containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Sonia Burke. Montgomery College is partnering with Montgomery County in the county's Sister Cities program by hosting an art exhibit featuring works from universities in China and El Salvador. Stan Jones has the story. With one of its newest entities, the Global Humanities Institute, Montgomery College joins Montgomery County in the county's fast-growing Sister Cities program that currently involves three cities, three countries, and two continents. Ever since we started establishing the Sister Cities program about three years ago, Montgomery College has been involved in each one of them. We worked with Sister Cities. Montgomery uh, County Executive um, has a priority for um, forming partnerships abroad. With a grant from the National Endowment given to five community colleges across the nation, 
Montgomery College leads that group with its global partnerships with China and El Salvador. Global Humanities Institutes are a fairly new phenomenon nationwide for everybody, but especially for community colleges. Montgomery College's relationship with Xi'an University of Arts and Sciences is an integral part of our sister city partnership with Xi'an. Uh, so we are very pleased to see this arts exhibition. The global partnership that Montgomery College has developed serves many purposes, including helping the development of Morrison, El Salvador. The needs of the two countries from our partnerships are very, very different, though. Um, obviously, China is very affluent these days, and El Salvador is developing, very, very committed to developing, and we can help them with that. Efectivamente, en el año de 2011, en el marco de buscar el desarrollo sostenible de Morazán, gestionamos este hermanamiento. We started the sister cities relationship in 2011 at a time when uh, the region of Morazan was in uh, beginning its development. At its fast growing pace, the Montgomery College Global Humanities Institute will be a model program that can be replicated globally as well as nationally. For County Report this week, in Tacoma Park, I'm Stan Jones. We turn now to the John Hopkins University campus in Rockville, where MCPS middle school students recently participated in some exciting hands-on science activities. MCPS TV has the story. Grade 7 students from Roberto Clemente and Earl B. Wood Middle Schools travel to Johns Hopkins University's Montgomery County campus to participate in Frontiers in Science and Medicine Day. Students don lab coats and gloves to become scientists for a day. It's actually really fun. There's so many tables here. You learn about different things, geology, um, biology, uh, chemistry. Um, it's, really, it's been a really fun experience so far. What cuts up our DNA? Nearly 20 participating businesses sponsored or were involved in this program with the goal of mentoring students to consider science and medicine as a career in their future. It's really important, in our opinion, to bring science and medicine to students in seventh grade. It gives them an opportunity early on, perhaps before they've made a decision about what they want to study in college, to be exposed to different career paths. I love coming around seeing all the different, different jobs that you can have in different fields of science. We got to see some, we got to see, uh, extract some strawberry DNA. We got the use of the surgical equipment, which was really cool. This program, now in its sixth year, promotes the school system's science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM initiatives. Students witness firsthand how the sciences can help to solve real-world problems. Johns Hopkins is crucial to uh, what we do with STEM in the county. They uh, provide a lot of support, K through 12, actually, for our students um, in exposure. They also provide professional development for our teachers and programs that help the whole STEM package for Montgomery County. In the future, in science, I want to be a biologist, like my mom's friend. She researches the um, DNA, the um, cancer cells, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and she actually works at NIH, which is, which is where I want to work in the future. Since the county has equipped select school buses with cameras, over 800 drivers have been cited for illegally passing a stopped school bus that was either dropping off or picking up children. Montgomery County Police Captain Tom Didone joins us now with more information about why this is so troubling. Captain? Well, in January this year, the county implemented our automated school bus enforcement program where we placed 25 cameras on our school buses. And since uh, January of this year through September, we have issued 825 violations for people of illegally passed school buses. That is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, one of the issues that have been raised, and people are concerned about when they should stop for a school bus. And the answer to that question is, if you think you should stop for a school bus, stop. Uh, but the law says that if, unless there's a physical barrier between your vehicle and the school bus, you must stop. So in other words, if there's paint on the road, paint doesn't protect. But if in doubt, please stop, because the care of our kids and our safety of our, of our students are the most important priority for us in the county. Thank you. The Montgomery County Division of Solid Waste Services offers a service for folks that is both environmentally friendly and secure. 
on Saturday, November 15th, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. at Northwest High School in Germantown. You can shred and recycle your confidential papers. Residents can bring up to five paper bags or cardboard boxes for shredding, and the service is free. For more information, visit the county's website or call 311. The county's annual Thanksgiving parade promises to be a grand celebration to kick off the holiday season. More than 100 units will participate in the parade on Saturday, November 22nd in downtown Silver Spring. Festivities start at 10 a.m. and the parade route will be the same as last year, proceeding south on Georgia Avenue and ending at Silver Spring Avenue. When we come back, we'll take you to the grand opening of the new Scotland Community Center. And we'll introduce you to our pet of the week. Stay with us. County Report this week is coming right back. Register now for winter session and spring semester classes at Montgomery College. Choose courses from more than 130 majors and programs offered at our campus locations and online. Winter session begins January 5th and spring semester January 26th. So register today online or at any of our three campuses. It was a great fall season for the Raptors. The men's soccer team won their third straight Region 20 title and now head to the national championships November 13th through 16th. Volleyball took their second straight Region 20 crown and finished second in District G. And the women's soccer team finished second in Region 20. Dr. Michael Anthony Ingram, the dynamo behind the DC Poetry Project, returns to MC's Rockville campus on November 12th to perform his provocative poetry. Admission is free and open to the public. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett joined residents of the Scotland community for a ribbon cutting and dedication of a new recreation center in Potomac. The newly renovated facility was renamed for Scotland native and community activist Betty Carol Thompson. The project cost was $6.5 million and involved the complete demolition of the former structure and construction of a new two-level building that features a new gymnasium, two multi-purpose activity rooms, game room, weight and exercise room, spacious social hall, and more. I am thankful. I don't know if it's oh, well, I can't help it. <laughs> you don't know like I know. But first, I'd like to thank the Lord yes. for giving me the strength yes. and go on and do what I did. I don't care about myself. I want to see the children, the grown-ups, everybody enjoy a place like this. The county's Department of Recreation is offering hundreds of activities to remain active during the winter months, and you can find them all in the Winter Recreation Guide. Registration for winter programs and classes opens November 17th. There is a wide range of classes, special events, and sports for residents of all ages. Registration can be done online, by mail, fax, or in person at the Montgomery County Recreation Administrative Offices on Randolph Road in Silver Spring. For more information, visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash rec. Montgomery Parks officials have announced that the Garden of Lights at Brookside Gardens is canceled this year because of ongoing construction at the entrance and in the parking areas. A popular attraction, officials say the Garden of Lights draws an estimated 45,000 visitors each year. The good news is that the renovation project at Brookside Gardens should be complete next summer and visitors are expected to see vast improvements in 2015. For more information, visit the Brookside Gardens website. Let's meet our pet of the week. Here's Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society. Kathy? Hi, this week I'm here with Bam Bam, and he is a handful. He's just four months old. He will be neutered upon adoption, but it's very rare for us to have a pure white cat. And he's not quite pure white. He has a little smudge of black on his head here, or gray, really. Now, when we do have white cats, a lot of people think that white cats are deaf, and that is just not the case. That is definitely a fallacy or a myth. So Bam Bam can hear just fine. Give us a call at 240-252-2555 so we can tell you all about him and all his friends that we have here, or visit him on the web at mchumane.org. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. 
Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.